I'm going to demonstrate how to take your fog server that's already installed and go through the process of uploading an image and then downloading an image and have that image, once it gets downloaded to the new workstation, automatically join Active Directory. I'm going to go through these basic steps that we need to do. So just to review, I already have Fog installed on CentOS. And one of the first things I need to do is make sure that I'm not getting any PHP 5.3 errors uh, with the date time. So I'm going to switch over to my Fog server. And as you can see, I have already downloaded Fog and RPM Forge and gone through those processes. So now I'm going to edit my PHP 5.3 file. And that is in the etc directory. And in there you can see I added a line. And I'm just going to highlight it this is the line that you're going to need to add. So just for the sake of going through this in VI, those who might not be familiar with it, I'm going to hit DD to delete that line. And then I'm going to hit I to insert. And now I'm in insert mode. So I'm going to type date dot time zone space equals space quote America slash Chicago end quote. Hit enter and I hit escape and then shift colon. So you need to notice at the bottom I have the colon prompt now and I hit WQ on the keyboard to write this file out to disk and then quit the VI program. And then I'm going to want to type shutdown dash R now and what this will do is reboot my fog server. So I'm not going to do that because I already have edited my PHP INI file. So I'll wait for that to boot back up and then you should be able to access the web interface for fog. And this is on my server. I typed in my IP address of my fog server slash fog slash management. And I'm here at my home screen. Now just a quick review on here. If I go to host management, and click on list all hosts. I can see I have already two existing hosts. Uh, right now it's doing a quick little check to see if it can communicate with these computers. It's not that big a deal. It says two hosts. It was able to ping, but the hosts are down right now. It means they're not responding. But anyway, so this computer right here is the name I just left to default based on the MAC address. I didn't give it anything special. So this is the computer that I'm gonna ensure I have a golden setup on. All my apps and everything are installed the way I want it and this is where I'm going to upload to a new image. So to upload this to a new image I go to image management and I need to create a new image. If I list I already have one but I'm going to create a brand new one so I'm going to create a new image and I'm going to give this a name. This is going to be my golden win 7 image. I'm going to say Windows 7 64 bit with Chrome installed. I should have said with Chrome and the fog service installed because we're going to need that. And this is going to be stored on my default storage group. Um, this is the name of the file on the disk. And then image type, single partition, NTFS only. And then I'm going to hit add. So now I should have a list all images two images. So this is going to be important to now. We just essentially created a blank image. So now we're going to need to fill it. Well, let's go and prepare our workstation to be sysprepped so we can upload it to this new image. So I am going to now go to my workstation, which is right here. And as you can probably tell, this workstation, based on the name, is the MAC address of this workstation. And it's already a member of the domain. So I have this computer is already a member of the domain. And it's a 64-bit operating system. So I need to do a couple things. I need to install Chrome. So I'll open up a web browser here. And we're going to install the Chrome. OK, we'll cancel this. For multiple users so when multiple people log in they will all have the chrome installation so we're going to go to the google link and you'll see a link here you can use the alternate installer so we'll click on it 
and then we want to use the option right here choose between two alternate installers for your own user account or for all computer accounts on this computer we want to use this one right here and we want to accept and then run so this will install Google Chrome on this computer so every single user who logs in here because it's going to be a member of a domain will have the Google Chrome browser to the Google installer. While the Google installer is in, looks like it's done. So now I have Google Chrome installed. Pretty simple. So now it's installed for all users. Okay, and the next thing I need to do is I need to download WinSCP. <coughs> I'm going to need WinSCP because I need to download the file from my Linux FOG server that is going to be installing the script. I'm sorry, the service on this computer. So I'm going to do WinSCP. And I'm going to download the portable executables. I should download. And we'll save it to downloads. this up and there's the WinSCP program we can just run it right from the zip file and we're gonna connect to my fog server so the IP address is 172.16.0.99 and then the user is my root user and I hit log in Here's the key that encrypts the data between the two computers. And I instantly log in as root, and that's where I had downloaded the FOG uh, GZ file, and I extracted it to the FOG 0.32 folder. I open that up, and inside here I see the FOG service. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to drag it over to my Documents folder on my Windows 7 computer. So I'm going to copy that over. and exit out of this. Now I'll go to my documents folder and I should see the fog service. Go to the bin folder and double click on setup and it should install. Uh, now I, I, the, obviously I have this error message because it's saying that you already have fog installed in here which I do so I'm just going to do a repair for now but otherwise you'd go through the full install. Okay, the service already exists. And once we're done installing the FOG service, this is key to ensuring that you're going to be able to have this workstation join Active Directory. You just got to cancel out that uh, box on the bottom next to your dev. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay. This is their message because the service is already installed. And recall. So fog now is installed, the fog service. Yeah, we'll just say installed correctly. So it should show up down here shortly. And we'll close actually we'll delete the fog service folder. We don't need that anymore. And the download of WinSCP. We don't need that anymore. So that doesn't need to be part of the whole image. 
Now on the C drive, I created an unattend.xml file. So if we take a look at my folder options and tell Explorer not to hide file extensions, we can see that I have the unattend.xml file. If I right click on this and select edit, you can see this is the XML file. And this is available, there's several websites that offer different ones. One thing you want to make sure you have is the skip rearm and then the value of one set in there that will keep it from failing because you only rearm up to three times. So if you're doing multiple imaging, you're going to want to set that. Next one, computer name. This uh, component, you're going to want to leave blank because Fog will take care of that service. And then um, I have, although it doesn't appear to be working so well, the network location. Um, so it should at least prompt you for that. And then in here, uh, the disk configuration. Again, nothing Fog should take care of that, but here's an example of uh, imaging, creating the boot partition and so forth. So that's it. I will, um, and then I have my key in there as well. So we'll close this. And so you're going to need this unattend.xml file on the root of your system, on the C drive. And then you will be able to run sysprep. So how do we run sysprep? Um, I like to do it from the command line, but you can also do it just by double clicking on it. So we're going to open up the command line and change directory to C colon slash windows slash system 32 sysprep. And then if we type sysprep slash question mark, it pops up a little GUI usage. So we can leave that popped open there and type in the command. So sysprep slash quiet slash generalize forward slash out of box experience forward slash we're going to do shutdown after we're done and then forward slash on attend colon c colon slash on attend.xml so that will use the c drive now i'm fairly certain i like to do this just because i'm you know that way um, it will by default use the unattend file if it can see it on the root of the C drive. So you technically don't need that last unattend variable, but I like to put it in there anyways. So after it um, removes the identity of this computer, it's going to shut down this computer. So while this is working, we're going to go back to our server and configure our fog server and get it ready. So we're going to go to our fog server through the Windows server. And in here, we are going to need to download WinSCP. So we're going to download it again. WinSCP download. And we go download the portable executable because we're going to need to download now the fog crypt program to encrypt our active directory password that we're going to use within the fog service so it can join the workstation to the domain so there's my winscp we're going to run that type in 172.16.0.99 login is root same thing as we did before this time we're going to go into the fog32 folder and we're going to copy the fog crypt program so we're going to drag that over to documents copy that over so now we've downloaded the fog crypt folder from our fog servers uh, fog 032 folder we'll close that out and now if we take a look here's our fog crypt so we're going to need this fog crypt executable and we're going to have to go to a command line and we're going to type in change directory to documents, change directory to fog crypt, and then type fog crypt space, and then 
the plain text version of your password. So my Active Directory administrator password is password.1 with a capital P. Hit enter on that and it gives us this output. I'm gonna right click mark and then highlight this. And this is going to be copied in my clipboard. So now I can use that when I configure fog to automatically join my workstation to Active Directory. So we'll leave that open for now, check back on the status of my workstation. And it looks like my workstation is shut down. So we'll leave this open in the background and I'm gonna create a brand new workstation. So I have a brand new PC coming in and I'm gonna create a custom virtual machine. It's going to be Microsoft Windows 7 64-bit. And we're gonna save this in a folder. And we're gonna go new Windows 7. Hit save. And I wanna check the settings. I need to make a couple changes. First thing, the hard disk, something for you to know. Fog does not like SCSI hard disks. So what we're going to do is remove, oh, hey, come on. We don't want you to be running. We're gonna shut you down. Okay, so we're gonna remove the SCSI hard disk and we're gonna add an IDE hard disk. I'm gonna make this a 30 gig. And make sure that we are in the right network. We're going to put this in my host only network. So it's part of my virtual network that I'm working on here. And I don't have any printers. I don't want any sound. Keep this pretty basic here. Yeah, we'll keep that 3D. Okay. So now my settings are set. So now I have to register this workstation with Fog. So now we'll hit play. And this workstation should start up. And I should be able to do the quick host registration and inventory. And Fog registers and keeps track of all of its workstations based on the MAC address of the computer. Okay, so we'll just leave it at that screen for now and we'll go back and take a look at my Fog, and we'll look at our hosts. We should build list hosts, and there is our brand new computer, F4F4D. Remember that MAC address, so we can click on it. We'll give this a name. We'll call this the new Win7, and we're going to choose the host image. It's going to use the new golden Windows 7 image, and this is a Windows 7 computer. So we're gonna make those two changes, update it, and then we're also gonna to go to Active Directory. And we wanna join this to Active Directory after it's done. AdvancedNet.prv is my full domain name. The organizational unit, this needs to be entered in in LDAP format. If you leave it blank, it'll just add the workstation to the computer's OU by default, which I like to keep it there because then I can just drag it to where I want to later, of course, you can do whatever you want. Uh, the domain username, so it's gonna be my NetBIOS domain name slash administrator. And again, you can create another user account to use just for joining workstations. And the password I'm gonna need is gonna come from this command I typed. And now I update it. So now this host will be added to the domain 
advanced net PRV the moment that it gets imaged. So now I go to basic tasks and I would select deploy but as you remember we don't have an image yet to deploy because we're using the new golden Windows 7 image. So I have to now go to my previous host that I just shut down which was this one and I need to go to basic tasks and I need to upload this image to my server. When it's done I'm going to have it shut down and select upload image. So the task has started. So let's take a look at active tasks. So right now this computer is going to be uploading a new image. So let's go take a look at my workstation. We'll move our new Windows 7 out of the way and start up this computer and it should boot right up and start capturing the image. And there it's loading my Pixie Linux. And it might give you a few error messages like no chip and other things. It's just trying to load all the different drivers. Notice it's Windows 7, NFS. It's resizing the partition. And it's going to start the upload process. Oh, you know what? It's using the wrong image. So I'm going to hit. I'm going to reboot this. I'll shut it down. I forgot to change the image. So what we need to do is just go back to our server. List all hosts. And this host right here, I'm going to actually cancel my task. So we're going to kill this task. Now we can go back to my hosts. Saw host, and I need to change the image on this computer. So I'm going to edit this computer. And right now it's using the Windows 7 image. I want to have it upload to the golden Windows 7 image. So I'm going to update that. Now I can choose upload onto my server. There we go. Now I go back to my workstation and it should be ready to boot and upload the image. And golden wind seven image. So it's picking the right image now. It's gonna upload everything off of this hard drive up to the server. And then as soon as it's finished, I'm gonna go to my new Windows 7 computer reboot it and it will then download from the server to the hard drive of this computer which has no OS on it yet. So while that's running, I'm going to pause the machine and we'll come back in a couple minutes. So now you can see my Windows 7 has just finished and it is shutting down. Now that was my upload of my image. So now if I go to my server I want to make sure that I have tasks. I have no active tasks because it's finished uploading it. So now I'm going to go list all hosts. And here's my new Windows 7. And this one I want to deploy an image. So before I had uploaded an image. Now I'm going to deploy an image from my server to my new Windows 7 computer. Hit deploy. And I'm not going to shut down after task. I'm going to have it just reboot when it's done. So image all computers with the new golden Windows 7 image and now I can take a look at active tasks and it's sitting here waiting to go. Now I'm going to go over to my workstations and my new Windows 7 and I'm going to restart it. There it goes. Load fog. And it should be dumping the image now from the server. 
to my workstation. And there it goes. When it's done, we'll come back and uh, watch it as it reboots. I think up to three times that's to reboot in order for that Fox service to register and join this workstation to the domain. So actually before we pause, let's take a look at my Active Directory. I'll go to Server Manager and under Computers. You can see I hit refresh. I only have that one original computer that I imaged existing in here. So when it's done, it's going to reboot a few times. We'll come back and hopefully I should have a brand new computer automatically joined to the domain named New Windows 7. So we'll go back and we're at about 17%. It's going pretty fast. Okay, I am now at 100% uh, done. Just going to clean up a little bit here and then uh, reboot. And there's my brand new Windows 7 on a brand new virtual machine that had no operating system on it previously. And it's going to go through because we did sysprep this. It's going to have to go through and uh, verify and check the hardware, make sure it has all the drivers installed correctly. That's the nice thing of Windows 7. It is hardware independent, so you can install it on one computer and deploy it to different hardware platforms. That reduces the number of images you need at your organization. So while it's going through this, I'm going to pause it and we'll come back. So here we just finished setting up the hardware. It's applying some system settings. Restart. You notice it comes up to the starting windows. So I just restarted and it now says press control delete to log in, which means that this is now part of a domain. No. Oh. I didn't do anything and now it's shutting down. So it automatically, the fog service noticed that it had to run a little join to domain and it just automatically restarted my Windows computer. So now we'll come back up in and notice before it was having me log in as admin, which is a local user. So now when it comes in, I hit control delete. Still has me wanting to log in as admin. We should get a prompt for a username and password field. So I think it might have to have me restart one more time. We'll leave it here and see what happens. Oh, there it just shut down. So let's restart it again. So what happens when it comes back up. Control delete. There we go. So after it had restarted like three times, I now am getting the prompt to log into advanced net domain. I'll log in as a user, a Halverson. That's what that one. So I'm logging in as a user of the domain. While that's doing, let's just verify it's a member. So here's my computer's OU. Let's refresh this, and we should have two of them. My new Win7 computer with the name new-win7 is now joined to my domain. So there you have it. This unfortunately keeps popping up. But anyways, there's my Google Chrome. And I did set in my XML on a 10 file that if you open up Internet Explorer, it should go right to the technidges.org 
and looks like it did so it's working thank you very much for watching hope you uh, pick some good stuff up